Hello friends, it's a beautiful day and I'm trying to be kind. So I thought we would do some bee themed inspired DIYs this week. I'm trying not to be a dork. <laughs> Let's get started on the DIYs. We're gonna start out with this little faux wooden slatted easel that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take some painter's tape and just wrap it around the legs and then I end up um, taping the top of it too so I can just paint all willy-nilly and quickly and not have to worry about getting this black paint on the legs because I'm going to paint them white. So I'm taking Little Black Dress by DIY and I'm giving it one coat because it's dark and it covers really nicely and I'm being very careful there because I don't want to get it on the back because I'm going to paint the black back white as well and so you can see there I'm not going to show you all the paint. You all know how to paint. If you don't, you can probably find some tutorials on YouTube somewhere that will teach you how to paint. Okay, it's all painted black. Now we're going to paint the back and the uh, legs to the easel. The stand part, we're going to paint it beadboard by DIY. I have an another full jar of that, but I'm going to try to use up all the little bits and pieces in the bottom of this jar before we crack open the new jar. Okay, I took my IOD mold that is, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's got these bees and these beautiful laurels and um, greeneries, and they're just beautiful. So I poured them with some resin, and now I'm popping them out, and we are going to, okay, I didn't show you that I painted them. So I painted the bee and the crown with Queen Bee by DIY, and I painted the leaves with, not sure what that was, some green. It looks a little too dark to be aviary, but I was thinking I used aviary. But I'm just going to take some acrylic uh, metallic paint and just go over the top so you can see all the details. Same with the green leaf laurel parts. I don't know if you call these laurels. Vines, leafy pieces. How about that? Then I'm going to take my big top. I'm going to seal our easel so that it will be nice and sealed in that paint's not going anywhere and i also sealed those little resin pieces seal everything up it was aviary see it over there to the right okay now i'm going to take a tight bond quick and thick i'm going to put some on the top some on the bottom and i'm going to put some hot glue in the middle so that quick bond is going to be a permanent hold. It's going to hold it all nice and tight like it says. And then the hot glue is going to hold it until that um, tight bond sets up, which it does. It's quick. It sets up quick, but I didn't want it moving around while I'm gluing down the rest of them. Now I just take a little dry paintbrush and wipe away all the excess glue. Now I'm going to just speed this up real quickly and just show you that I did the same process for all four of these little pieces to glue them down on top of this little easel. And I just like the way, okay, paintbrush is peeling because guess what? I soak my paintbrushes a long time. Who else soaks their paintbrushes a long time before you rinse them? Or are you one of those people who's very diligent and disciplined and clean your paintbrushes up right away. Let me know in the comments below, which, which kind of person are you? I'd like to be more disciplined. That's part of my prayer life is to be more disciplined in every area of my life. So let me know if you're, if you're that disciplined. But this is the finished product. So let me know what you think about this very simple, quick and easy B DIY. In our next project, we're going to start with some canvas drop cloth, surprise, surprise, and some stamps by IOD. We're going to use the B and the letters, letterpress, I think it's letterpress, and the B came from, I really need to learn the names of these stamps, you guys. Now, this, the B I had on there backwards, so you're going to see me lift it up, and it didn't stick, so I'm going to flip it over, try to put it right back in the same place that I had it for placement. And then it's going to stick. The back of it is sticky. And then I'm going to press it down in there. Now, I've already primed these. And so I took a 20 grit sandpaper. 
usually when I get them, I just do the whole sheet. So then I don't have to remember when I go to use them, did I prime them or not? Okay, you see I only have one E on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it. I do have a piece of cardboard under here, the cir round circle cardboard I used as my guide to cut that. I've got it underneath there so that I have a hard surface because my silicone mat is has a little bit of give to it. And I'm just gonna hold it with one hand, rub it down with the other hand, and whenever I feel like that I've made contact with all of it, I'll lift it up and just look how beautiful it is. Now I took that, I cleaned them all off. I took that E and I put it where I wanted it and then I put it back on for placement. I'm just going to put ink on just the E that needs it. And then I'm gonna line everything back up. This clear sheet really helps to be able to do that. I'm gonna line everything back up, put that E right where I want it. And voila, this little piece is all stamped up. Okay, so I got this charger at my Dollar Tree. I finally found one. I've been looking and looking for these wood grain chargers and couldn't find it. Now, I tried to stamp some gold just on the wings, and it didn't come out that great, but I'm okay with how it looks. It's okay. I'm taking some dark wax by DIY, and I'm just rubbing it all over this because I, I wasn't particularly in love with the color, but when I put that dark wax on it, it was perfect. And then I decided I wanted to um, dirty up this little piece of drop cloth just around the edges. So I took my dark wax and I just kind of rubbed it on a little bit here and there and everywhere around the edges and just, you know, randomly. And then I took some clear wax just to seal that stamp in and just to kind of blend out the, the dark wax a little bit and just rubbed it all over it. And then I have this beautiful ribbon I got from Sam's Club a couple years ago. It's those big spools of ribbon that last forever and ever. Now I'm taking aviary. I'm going to show you the process on this leaf, vine, laurel, whatever you want to call this. Tell me what you would call this. I'm calling it a leaf vine. And I'm just going to pounce my little paintbrush. This is an older paintbrush that, you know, I don't care if the bristles are ruined because if you pounce enough times with your paintbrush like that you're going to ruin your bristles so i'm going to do all of those real quick and there they are now i'm going to take the dark wax by diy and i'm going to just put a coat on there and then wipe it back a little bit and i'm going to do all of these green pieces with this same process then i'm going to take that quick bond glue again and I'm just going to put a little bit around the edges. I'm going to kind of rub that in a little bit with a little silicone spatula just so that there's not, it doesn't make a little ridge where the glue was. And just making sure I get enough on there that it didn't soak all into the drop cloth um, that it will adhere. I'm trying to figure out where I want, how I want that wood grain to look. And then I'm just going to, you know, press it down, adhere it. And then I'm going to start adhering my little, uh, leaf vines around the edge the same way I adhered them to the first project. I just laid them down how I want them and then I'm going to go around and just adhere them with the quick and thick and the hot glue. Be kind is always a nice thing to have as a reminder for us to be kind to one another. The Bible tells us to love one another which, if we're loving one another, we should be kind to one another. And the B is just a fun little way to say it. Okay, I'm going to take this ribbon, and I just looped it around itself a couple times. And then I made one long piece for the tails. I'm pinching it in the middle, taking a piece of twine, and tying it up. I'm going to make sure they're both the same length. Both loops are the same length. And then I'm going to tie it really tight in the middle with a piece of twine and then cut off the excess. And once that's done, I'm going to pull those little loops out, twist them, fluff them, and make a cute little simple bow. Then I'm gonna hot glue it right above the little bee head. I'm gonna glue it down. Once it dries, cools off, I'll fluff it up. And then I decided I kinda wanted those tails to stay right where I wanted them to, so I'm just gonna convince them a little bit with some hot glue. How about that? 
we all need a little bit of convincing sometimes. So I'm going to use a little hot glue to convince those ribbon tails. Then I just took a little piece of twine, made a loop. I'm going to stick it on the back with a little tiny square of drop cloth. And this one is done. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, my name is Kendra and you're watching Late Night Creations. Welcome. Welcome to my beloved, continual, supportive followers. Let me know if you think that I labeled these farmhouse DIYs correctly. Or do you think these are farmhouse? Or what kind of decor would you label them? Or do we even need to label the decor? Let me know. Let me know what you think. And let's get back to crafting. This was a really fun little project. So I have this little tray that little wood embellishments come in from Dollar Tree. I have some little black dress by DIY that I'm going to paint this entire little tray, inside, outside, backside, all of it. I'm gonna paint the entire thing with little black dress. I'm gonna seal it with a big top. I'm not sure if I got that on camera or not. There were a lot of pieces of this video that did not get recorded and I apologize for that, but Sometimes I just forget to hit record. I'm going to take beadboard and paint the, the bees. The little bees, I'm just going to paint them with beadboard and make them white. But they're not going to stay white, so just hang on. Hold your horses. Have you ever heard that saying before? I used to get told that when I was a kid a lot. Hold your horses. I must have been a little bit anxious as a child. Okay, do all of those white, every one of them. And then I'm going to come with an in with Queen B, and we're going to make the crowns golden. Sometimes when I say crowns, it sounds like I'm saying crayons. Crayons, crowns, crowns. Okay, sometimes the more you say a word, the more ridiculous it sounds. Am I the only one that does that, or do you do that too? All of the crowns are going to be gold. I'm going to take Golden Rule by DIY. I just received this as I was making the video. I get it from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs on her website www.unicorndustdesigns.com. She sells all the DIY paints and products. She sells IOD. She has salt wash and she has all kinds of wonderful things on her website. So go and check her out. I'm going to take silver rub and buff and I'm going to paint it over and do it like almost like you would do a dry brush, but it's more solid. I just want to bring out the details. So this silver rub and buff I get on Amazon. It's in my Amazon storefront in the description box below, along with a bunch of other goodies that are things that I love to craft with or that I've ordered um, in the past to craft with. And this is how it turned out all the little pieces and you can play tic-tac-toe. The last project in this video, we're going to be painting the handles on this rolling pin with little black dress. Now my friend D that I met at the For Love of Junk weekend last fall in Kansas with Sammy and Bree sent me three rolling pins because we were in a chat and we were talking about our stash and our hoards and I said, oh man, those rolling pins are awesome and I couldn't find any in my area and she sent these to me. Thank you, D. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to transform this one into something really, really cute. I think it is. So I taped off the handles so I wouldn't mess them up. So I'm going to paint this, the rolling part of it, with beadboard by DIY. And I'm going to give it two good solid coats. Two thin coats, but make it solid. Okay, now we're done. And I'm going to take this inlay 
I think it's the Milage inlay by IOD and I'm going to cut as closely as I can get to the image. Now the reason I'm doing that is because otherwise if you don't cut close you're going to have a little border around it and that's a little frustrating. So I'm trying to um, place and see where I want them and yeah. I'm deciding I want them kind of like that. So I'm going to put a pretty thick layer of paint down right where I want that B to lay. Okay, so I'm not going to paint the whole thing. I'm just going to put where I want that B to lay in a nice thick layer. And then I'm going to paint, I'm going to spray, spritz that inlay piece with a, just a little bit of water. Just make it a little bit wet. See there? Okay, and then I'm going to lay it in that wet paint, printed side down, just how I want it. And then I'm going to tap it very, very lightly into that paint. And then I'm going to take a really soft, clean cloth, and I'm going to press it down into that paint. Okay, but well, I'm going to spritz it a little more. Sorry, sorry, you got to spritz it. And then I'm going to tap it gently gently but firmly like don't rub it please don't rub it just pounce it how about that down into that paint but you don't want to do it super hard because then you'll rub it and move it you just want it to um, soak into that paint okay now I'm gonna do both of the other bees I'm just speeding it up because it's the exact same process but I thought you might want to see it so I'm gonna spritz it that down a little bit just makes it a little more pliable because I'm putting it on a curved surface. And then um, you see it kind of turns a little bit, um, you know, opaque. But it's because of the paint. The paint's it's soaking up that paint. I'm seeing where I want it so I know where to put my paint. I'm putting that paint in there and then putting that paint on there pretty thick. And then I sprayed my little inlay and then I spritz it when I get it on there and then I'm tap 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 tapping it no rubbing boys and girls and then I'm gonna let it dry I let mine dry overnight only because I had the time and then I did not record me peeling it off so disappointed because it was so satisfying and it turned out so beautiful so I'm just telling you that I had the the inlay on there I spritzed it down really good with some water and I let it sit for about 15, 20 seconds and I peeled it off. You can see that one smeared because I rubbed it before it was dry. Don't do that. But if you do, if you didn't listen to me and you rub it, then you can just take a little bit of paint and go over that. And I didn't go inside the wings, so there was still a little bit of smear on there. But if I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't know. So I'm going to take the tape off the handles and I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to spray it with some fixative. You have to spray your inlays with some kind of sealer. Spray it. And I had this in my stash already. Somebody gave it to me. Um, and so I took it outside and I gave it two coats and I let it dry in between. And now I'm going to take my DIY wax because I only sprayed the part that had the inlays on it. Because if you don't, you're going to have a smeared mess. Okay. So I'm going to take the DIY wax and I'm going to wax the handles and I'm going to wax over the inlays. I'm going to wax this whole thing with clear by DIY. Clear wax by DIY with my wonderful makeup brushes that are linked in my description box in my Amazon store because they're wonderful for applying wax. And then I just go over it with that soft little rag just to buff it so it gives you a nice smooth finish. Then I decide it needs a little buffalo check or gingham bow on it because we're calling this farmhouse, right? This just screams farmhouse to me. So I decide it needs a little bow. I can't decide where to put the bow. So I put a little ribbon around there and I put a little bow. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cute. But then I decided, let's try this. I left the other bow on in case I liked it better. So, you know, I kind of like to make bows without making a bow. You know just have some tails so I decided just to make a couple tails here and do it just on one end I like things to be a little asymmetrical sometimes everything doesn't have to always be even right so just do it on one end 
and I decided I like that better. So I just undid that bow, took that off, and left it like this. So let me know which bow you liked better on the rolling pin. That's all for this video, and I hope you will be inspired to make some bee decor for your home for the summer. But most of all, I want you to remember to be still and know that he is God.